Her on. Hi everyone, I am here with your Bible reading. I hope you guys are having a great start to your week. Um, I'm sorry we haven't done a video in, it seems like, so long. I have been so very sick with my with this stomach disease. Some days are worse than others and you never know when it's going to hit. And sometimes it'll last a day or two, other times it'll last a week or longer. And this time was a long flare up for me. I was sick every day, several times a day. Nothing helped and I couldn't eat anything. I actually I dropped a lot of weight during that time, which I usually do. I remember the time before last when it was like that, I lost 17 pounds in one week. I mean, that's how bad it is. All right. But I am feeling better today, so I wanted to do the video for sure. Can you guys believe that Christmas is next month? I am so not ready. I am so not prepared. All right. Um, I got the prayer request wrote down on here. Plus the book's put away right now. I got to get it out later. So let's go ahead and go over those first. Please pray for our dear uh, friend and sister in Christ, our Granny Judy. She had to have a heart catheterization today. She's, you know, elderly. Please pray for Sherman Crabtree. He's in a lot of pain in his back and his shoulder today from where we were in town and him having to lift on things and lift on that wheelchair, which is, you know how heavy those are if you have one. Please pray for Rhonda Karshner and Abby Myers. They had the court case and they lost the home, so they're going to have to find another place to live, and pretty soon, probably. And my nephew, Jimmy Myers, is living there right now with him, too, while he's sick. Um, he's going to be having surgery on his brain, so please keep Jimmy Myers in your prayers. Please keep Cindy and Jim Welsh in your prayers. Dora Carper, Layla, Melody Stanley, my sister, she's getting a divorce or already got a divorce. She said she already got one, but I'm not sure because she says different things, so I'm not sure if she got one, but I know her husband is in jail. I've seen that last night. Um, so she's supposed to be divorcing him or already has. So she's going through a hard time right now, so please pray for her and the family. Please pray for Michelle Watkins. Michelle's got a lot going on in her life right now. Plus, you know, she's chronically ill. She's got a lot of pain every day. Please pray for Latham Burns. We're not sure yet if he has a brain tumor or what's going on, but I need to find out if there's any new information on him. Please pray for, and he's only five, by the way. Please pray for Lonnie Doles Jr. Um, he went to the hospital and got fluids and stuff here not too long ago and was feeling better after that, which I know how that is with my stomach. I thought I was going to have to go to the hospital a couple of times, but I couldn't find a ride, so I wasn't able to go at first, and then uh, my mom was going to take me to the hospital that's really close to here, but that hospital is not a good hospital. It's They almost killed Sherman here before, no joke. And we had another neighbor that lived here a week or two ago that just walked out and left and went down to Hosier to that hospital, and she died. She was fine when she walked out of here. So I, we don't like going to that hospital and I couldn't get nobody to take me to the bigger one. But it's okay, I eventually started to feel better today. Um, but getting fluids and stuff does make you feel better when you're really dehydrated and stuff. Danette Rager, please pray for her. Her mom passed away. Please pray for Ray Dunlap, he's a pastor. Um, I went to his church a lot, and he is the one that actually married Sherman and I almost 20 years ago. He has Meniere's disease, and he's very dizzy all the time, and there's no cure for it. My uncle actually had it a year or two before he died, and he couldn't even set up. The dizziness was so bad, he had to stay laid down all the time. That would be a horrible, horrible life, and Ray's such a good person. He can't even walk without a cane and hold on to somebody now because of the dizziness. They tried draining water and stuff out of his ears, but it didn't help at all. And the medicine they have him on didn't, is not helping either. 
and please pray for Barb Pose. You know she has an immune disorder and is chronically ill all the time too. Okay guys, that is our prayer request. So let's go ahead and get started with the Bible reading. We're going to be reading today Hebrews chapter 6, Psalm 105 verses 16 through 36, and Proverbs chapter 27 verses 1 and 2. down there. Did you guys have a good Halloween? Did you celebrate? Um, one of my aunts, she has a party every year for Halloween. It's not a scary thing or anything. They just have a hayride and everybody brings something to eat or she makes everything. They cook a big kettle of beans outside and the big black kettle, you know, and they have beans and cornbread and she has a cake walk and uh, games for the kids and stuff. It's always really fun. She does it mainly because her husband's birthday is that time as well. But we haven't got to go in several years for it. But they always have a really good time. And trick-or-treaters were here, but it was pouring the rain, so I don't think they... So we didn't set outside because it was pouring the rain. I don't know if anybody else did or not, or if any kids even showed up. Because my aunt, my other aunt, that took us to town today, she only had four kids show up at her house. Years ago, there were so many. It was so fun when we were kids. It's nothing like it is anymore, like it was. But we just hung out here. What'd you guys do? Anything special? Did you go to any parties or take the kids trick-or-treating or anything? I'm hoping my sister takes her kids because she has five little kids, 12 to three years old, and um, they're having another one here later on, I think this week, because of the rain, a church is. So I think I sent her the link where the church was having the Halloween passing out for the kids, so hopefully she'll take them there. They give stuff away at the church in the firehouse, I believe. Okay, so let's start with Hebrews chapter 6. Therefore, let us move beyond the elementary teachings about Christ and be taken forward to maturity, not laying again the foundation of repentance from acts that lead to death and of faith in God, instruction about cleansing rites and laying on of hands, the resurrection of the dead and eternal judgment, and God permitting we will do so. It is impossible for those who have once been enlightened, who have tasted the heavenly gift, who have shared in the Holy Spirit, who have tasted the goodness of the Word of God and the powers of the coming age, and who have fallen away to be brought back to repentance. To their loss they are crucifying the Son of God all over again and subjecting Him to public disgrace. Land that drinks in the rain often falling on it, and that produces a crop useful to those for whom it is farmed, receives the blessing of God, but land that produces thorns and thistles is worthless and is in danger of being cursed. In the end, it will be burned. Even though we speak like this, dear friends, we are convinced of better things in your case, the things that have to do with salvation. God is not unjust. He will not forget your work and the love you have shown him as you have helped his people and continue to help them. We want each of you to show the same diligence to the very end, so that what you hope for may be fully realized. We do not want you to become lazy, but to imitate those who through faith and patience inherit what has been promised. When God made this promise to Abraham, since there was no one greater for him to swear by, he swore by himself, the Lord did saying, I will surely bless you and give you many descendants, and he has. And so after waiting patiently, Abraham received what was promised, starting with Abraham and his wife Sarah having their son Isaac, and that was their only son, except um, Abraham had another son that came before Isaac by a slave girl, by um, Sarah's slave, his wife's slave girl, um, a son named Ishmael, but they sent them away when Sarah was having Isaac. So Isaac, you know, would be the one that would inherit everything. 
Okay. People swear by someone greater than themselves, and the oath confirms what is said and puts an end to all argument. Because God wanted to make the unchanging nature of his purpose very clear to the heirs of what was promised, he confirmed it with an oath. God did this so that by two unchangeable things in which it is impossible for God to lie, we who have fled to take hold of the hope set before us many be greatly encouraged. We have this hope as an anchor for the soul, firm and secure. It enters the inner sanctuary behind the curtain where our forerunner Jesus has entered on our behalf. He has become a high priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. Amen. Jesus will always be there for us no matter what. Even if you fall away and come back to the Lord, He will accept you back with open arms. He is always loving, always forgiving. He's our Father. He understands. Jesus is our brother. He understands. Just like when your kid does something, or your niece or nephew, if you don't have kids like me, your niece or nephew does something that's bad that they know they're not supposed to do. And you're, you may be angry about it. You may be embarrassed about it. You may be mad at them, but you still love them and will still forgive them if they ask for forgiveness and want to change the, their ways. That's how God is with us. He's our Father. We're His children. Of course He's going to forgive us and open us back into His arms, welcome us back into His arms, because He loves us so much, just like you love your children or grandkids or nieces and nephews. He never stops loving us no matter what. So never think that. You can always call on the name of the Lord or on our brother Jesus. They are always there for you 24-7 no matter where you are. And remember, you don't have to talk out loud to them like, like I'm talking right now. You can talk to them with your heart and in your mind because God and Jesus knows what you're thinking and they know what's in your heart. So you don't have to talk out loud in front of people. I do that all the time. I couldn't get through a day without talking to them. It really, they help a great deal. They really do. Talking about your problems and just any and everyday things with them. It really helps. Okay, let's read Psalm 105, verses 16 through 36. He called down famine on the land and destroyed all their supplies of food. And he sent a man before them, Joseph, sold as a slave. This is talking about the land of Egypt then. Um, when Joseph got there, he was a slave. His brothers sold him because they were jealous of him, because um, their dad and mom showed Joseph a lot more attention, and they thought he was special because he could interpret dreams, which God gave him that gift. But he was sold as a slave, and he was a prisoner and a slave in Egypt until one day he got to interpret Pharaoh's dream, and then he became the head of everything. The only person that was greater than Joseph in the land of Egypt then was Pharaoh. Other than Pharaoh, Joseph was in charge of everything, and he got married and had two children, Manasseh and Ephraim. So God had a plan for Joseph, and he saved Egypt by having dreams and knowing how what was going to happen, a big famine was going to be in the land, and he helped to prevent that, and everybody had food, even Joseph's brothers that came back, not knowing that Joseph, you know, was what he was. He was a high person now. They didn't even recognize him when they seen him, and they came back because their land was suffering, and they had no food. So they came to Egypt to get food, and that's when... Joseph finally revealed himself to them that he was Joseph. And they all begged for forgiveness. And Joseph found out he had a younger brother named Benjamin now. Okay. So Joseph sold as a slave. They bruised his feet with shackles. His neck was put in irons. To what he foretold came to pass. Till the word of the Lord proved him true. The king sent and released him. The ruler of people set him free. He made him master of his household, ruler over all he possessed. 
to instruct his princes as he pleased and teach his elders wisdom. Then Israel entered Egypt. Jacob resided as a foreigner in the land of Ham. The Lord made his people very fruitful. He made them too numerous for their foes, whose hearts he turned to hate his people. To conspire against his servants, he sent Moses his servant and Aaron, which is Moses' brother, whom he had chosen. They performed his signs among them, his wonders in the land of Ham. He sent darkness and made the land dark, for had they not rebelled against his words, he turned their waters into blood, causing their fish to die. See, this is happening because when Joseph's family went, they found out Joseph was there in charge of everything. They moved there to that area. And, you know, they had many more descendants after that. And the Israelites became, the Hebrews became more populated than the Egyptians did. And that kind of scared them. So they were... You, they used them as slaves. They used all of them as slaves. <clears throat> and a lot of times they would, you know, kill a lot of them and their children. And God was going to free them through Moses and Aaron. And Moses, remember, when he was a baby, he was sent down in a river because that's when the people were killing the babies again because the Hebrews were getting too populated getting too many of them. They thought they'd turn against them and they would lose. So all the babies were killed. But the woman put Moses, Moses' mother put him in a basket and sent him down the river and an Egyptian princess found him and she raised him. She raised Moses. But later he found out he was a Hebrew. He was an Israelite. And he helped free his people through his brother Aaron that he met. He also had a sister, Miriam through God with the plagues. Their land teemed with frogs, which went up into the bedrooms of their rulers. He spoke, and there came swarms of flies and gnats throughout their country. He turned their rain into hell, with lightning throughout their land. He struck down their vines and fig trees. He shattered the trees of their country. He spoke, and the locusts came. You know how loud those things are. They drive you crazy. Can you imagine all them locusts? Grasshoppers without number. They ate up every green thing in their land, ate up the produce of their soil. At this time, Joseph had already been dead. Then he struck down all the firstborn in the land, the first fruits of all their manhood. God, for the last plague, killed the firstborn of all the Egyptians. Now, the reason the Hebrews' children, the firstborns, did not get killed is because God had them smear lamb's blood across their doors, the outside of their doors. And the ghost of death, death would pass by them if they seen the blood on the door. And they went and killed the Egyptians, the firstborns. And one of the firstborns that were killed was Pharaoh's son. And that's when he let them go. But then they started charging after them again. And that's when God parted the sea and let them cross on dry land. And when the Egyptians got into the uh, sea to go after them, the water came crashing down on them. So they were free, but they had to wander in the desert for 40 years before they found the promised land because they kept turning their backs on God when they got angry. And God got mad at them and he said, this generation will not enter the promised land. It'll be the next generation. So that generation had to die out. That's why it took 40 years to get there. Okay, and we're going to end today with Proverbs chapter 27, verses 1 and 2. Do not boast about tomorrow, for you do not know what a day may bring. So true. Many times I've been like, or anybody's been like, oh, I'm so happy about tomorrow. We're going to go to Kings Island or somewhere. And... The next day it'll be pouring the rain or it'll be shut down because something happened, the car will be broke down. You never know what's going to happen. That's why it's really hard to make plans because God's the one in charge, not us. Or the devil may be up to his tricks and trying to ruin a plan for you to get you angry with God. 
but it's not God doing it, it's Satan when it's a bad thing. And let's see, number two. Let someone else praise you and not your own mouth, an outsider and not your own lips. Don't go around bragging about yourself. If pe other people think you're good, they'll brag about you. They'll talk good about you, but you don't want to talk good about yourself and brag about yourself because that's really ignorant and rude, and uh, people really look down at that. You know, like, I'm so wonderful, look at me, look at me. I know people like that too, and it's, it's so annoying, it's so annoying. All right, guys. Well, that was everything for today. I hope it touched your guys' hearts. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Let's bring those souls to Jesus, and God willing, we'll see you guys again tomorrow with another Bible reading. Bye, guys. God bless.